Okay, in this problem, we're asked to use Lagrange multipliers to find the volume of a box whose total cost is $5.40, and the bottom costs $0.04 cents per square inch, the sides cost $0.02 cents per square inch, and the top costs $0.01 cent per square inch. We've just given a little diagram of a box, and so first we want to create a cost equation to determine um, how everything is going to be relating to, to each other. So we have, first of all, the bottom is the length times the width. And that's going to be four cents per square inch. So we'll just multiply that by four. We'll compute our cost in terms of cents. And then our sides are gonna cost two cents per square inch. So plus two times, so our sides are either the length times the height or the width times the height. So we have two of each of those. And all of those four sides cost two cents per square inch. And then finally our top, which is again the length times the width, is one cent per square inch. So so we have our cost equation is given as follows. We can combine some like terms here and here and simplify a little bit. So we have Five LW plus four LH plus four WH is equal to 540. And we want to maximize the volume, where volume is just given as length times width times height. Okay, so now we want to use Lagrange multipliers to try and find the maximum volume given this constraint. So that means that we want this constraint to be satisfied, and we want to find a we want to find a points where the gradient of our volume is equal to some constant lambda times the gradient times g. Okay, so where g is our constraint, and we'll just let g be the left-hand side of our equation here, and then that way our constraint is just a level set, or a level curve of um, our function g. So our gradient of our volume is is equal to WH comma LH comma LW. And then we're gonna set that equal to lambda times our gradient of G, which is going to be five W plus four H comma five L plus four H and then finally, we'll take the partial derivative of g with respect to h. And we get four L plus four W. So now we have our constraint equation that needs to be satisfied. And then we actually have three more equations that need to be satisfied by setting each of the components equal to each other. So we'll go ahead and just
Okay, so we have, by setting the components equal to each other, we gain three more equations. So we have four equations and four unknowns. So first off, let's just um, make sure that we'll check when lambda is equal to zero. So if lambda is equal to zero, then that means that wh is equal to zero. So, so either w or h is equal to zero, and our volume is equal to zero. And so not only are we not allowing um, our length, width, or height to equal zero, since it's a box, and if we let one of the dimensions equal to zero, we don't have a box. So if, any, if lambda is equal to zero, we see that that forces at least one of our dimensions to be zero, which can't happen. So we know that lambda cannot be equal to zero. So if we let lambda, so if lambda is non-zero, then Okay, so one thing to notice is that we have a 4h term in this equation and a 4h in this term, or a lambda 4h. So we can, we can let those equations be equal to each other. So we have wh is equal to Five lambda w plus four lambda h, and then we have lh is equal to five lambda l plus four lambda h. You can bring these terms to the side of the equation and set these equal to each other. So this implies that. WH minus 5 lambda W is equal to LH minus 5 lambda L. We can bring our LH term to this side and put our lambdas together. So we have and then I also factored out a uh, factor of h from this term and this term, and 5 lambda from each of these two terms. So we see that um, we can now bring them to the same side of the equation and factor out a w minus l. So we get that either w minus l or 5 minus, or h minus 5 lambda is equal to 0, or both. Um, for the first case, we'll let h minus 5 lambda equal 0. So So for this case, we have, this implies, obviously, that h is equal to 5 lambda. And we can go ahead and plug that into our equations. And we see that, yeah. So we'll go ahead and just plug into um, our equation number 2. So we have 5 lambda w is equal to lambda times the quantity 5w plus 20 lambda. 
we can go ahead and we'll subtract the 5 lambda w from both sides so we get Twenty lambda squared is equal to zero, but that implies that lambda squared is equal to zero, and hence lambda is equal to zero. But we already determined that lambda cannot be equal to zero, so we arrived at a contradiction. So we know that five minus or h minus five lambda is not equal to zero. So that means that w minus l must be equal to zero. So if w minus l is equal to 0, then we have that w is equal to l. And we can go ahead and plug in to our equations again. So we have We have LH is equal to 5 lambda L plus 4 lambda H. And that's just our equation 3. And notice that if we plugged in W equals L into our second equation, we would get the same as equation 3. And then finally, our equation 4 turns to L squared is equal to lambda times 8L, because we have 4L plus 4L, it's 8L. So we have, we know that L cannot be equal to 0, so we can divide both sides of our equation 4 by L. So this implies L is equal to 8 lambda. And now we can use that information in our equation 3. So if L is equal to 8 lambda, we have eight lambda h is equal to 40 lambda squared plus four lambda h. Subtract 4 lambda h from both sides. And we have that 4 lambda h is equal to 40 lambda squared. And again, we know that lambda is not equal to 0. So we can divide both sides of our equation by lambda. And we can also divide by 4, so we get h is equal to 10 lambda. So we have, and this, of course, we know that L is equal to W already. So we have h is equal to 10 lambda, and L and W are equal to 8 lambda. So I'll go ahead and write this. And we'll go ahead and so we've used equations two, three, and four already, and we've solved L, W, and H in terms of lambda. The only equation that we have yet to use is our equation 1. So we can go ahead and plug in our W, L, and H into our original constraint equation. And we'll determine what lambda is. And then we'll determine from that what our length, width, and height are at our critical point. So we have from equation 1,
So we have 5 times 8 lambda squared, which is, might as well just write it, 5 times 64 lambda squared, plus 4 times 80 lambda squared, plus 4 times 80 lambda squared is equal to 540. And we got that just by plugging in W and L as 8 lambda and H as 10 lambda into our constraint. So we can go ahead and simplify this a little bit and we get that lambda squared is equal to 9 over 16. And this is just basic algebra. We're adding like terms and dividing by our constant value. Um, so we get lambda is squared is equal to 9 sixteenths. And that means that lambda is equal to plus or minus 3 fourths. And again, we know that Our length and width are 8 times lambda, and our height is 10 times lambda. And so in order to have a box, again, we need all of our dimensions to be positive. Um, so that means that a negative value for lambda isn't very useful. So that means that our critical point occurs when lambda is equal to 3 fourths. So we can go ahead and determine what our L and W and H are from this information. So we have 3 fourths times 8 is equal to 6. So we have our length and our width are equal to each other and they're at 6. And our height is equal to 10 times 3 fourths or 7.5. So we have our critical point at Length with height is 6, 6, 7.5. And that means that our volume and these are in inches. And so then our volume is 270 cubic inches. So we found that our max volume is equal to 270 cubic inches, and it's given when length and width are 6 and our height is 7.5.